Hey everybody, Jake here and welcome to The Hobby. Today we're going to be talking about Unlisted Lease Celebration Break, an absolute debacle. So bad it actually caused Unlisted Leaf to quit YouTube over it. So what exactly happened? It was an interesting stream. I know a little bit about it because I was watching it and I actually bought into it. So I have my celebrations cards from the official Unlisted Leaf uh, pack opening. So how did exactly it go down? Well, people would spend $50 and you would get yourself three celebrations booster pack. They would be open up live on the release day of celebrations. It was meant to be really fun and an easy way for you to get some celebrations booster packs. But at $50 for three celebrations booster pack, I think it left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouth because that's a lot of money for three booster packs. For three booster packs, you're expecting a lot less. It should be way cheaper than $50. And if they say it's due to production costs, shipping costs, whatever the case, if they can't lower the price, they shouldn't even have done the uh, whole entire thing. It just wasn't worth it at that price. I wanted to do it just to support the hobby and I wanted to get an understanding of how exactly it went down because it was an absolute debacle, unlisted leaf quit YouTube over the whole entire event. So I wanted to cover this in a lot of details, pretty much starting from the very beginning. Like why do people even join uh, booster box breaks? What's the point of them? Why would anyone spend more money on booster packs than normal to watch someone else open it for them? What's the point of the experience? Why was this one so bad? And how would I approach going about doing box breaks? Why would anyone join a booster box break? A big part of it is that it's a lot of fun and you get some nice exposure if you're into that. The most popular box break was Logan Paul who opened up a first edition base set booster box last year. And a lot of YouTubers actually bought in. I didn't buy into one of those because they were way too expensive uh, for me. But someone like Randolph Pokemon who bought in gained like 200,000 subscribers during the Logan Paul hype in Pokemon that happened last year. So there are reasons. Most people just want a good experience. The average Joe just wants to be entertained. It can be a lot of fun to watch your favorite YouTuber open up booster packs and send it to you. It creates a nice, interesting like relationship if you can even consider it that. And I do get why someone would do this. I mean, like I joined in just because I thought it might be fun, interesting, and it's great content, but at the same time, it went terribly. So what was wrong with Unlisted Least version? First off, $50 for three celebrations booster pack is terrible. That's a terrible deal. Most people uh, who bought into that were just trying to have a good time and they didn't even get that. So what was the big issue with the stream? Your booster packs were opened up incredibly fast. They were opening up four people's booster packs at the same time. If you're not careful and you blink, you would miss your pack opening. A lot of people didn't get to actually see their booster packs being open. They had no idea what cards they got because if you literally blink, you would miss your pack opening. Your pack opening lasted a total of five seconds. And when it comes to a fun and entertaining experience, Viewers didn't get that. So that was the first big challenge was that it felt like a ripoff and no one was really entertained by the pack opening. If I were to do something like this, I would definitely reduce the cost. And if you can't reduce the cost because there's so many individuals, then raise it. Raise the amount of booster packs that someone would get. Instead of doing three booster packs, do 10 booster packs, do 20 booster packs, do 36 booster packs so that there are less people, but each one of those people are getting a full experience out of it. When you are putting $50 into this experience and you see your booster packs open up super fast without any care, it's gonna leave a sour taste in your mouth because you felt like you were gypped. You felt like you were ripped off over it. A lot of people actually ask me why I don't do booster box opening or booster packs opening uh, for other people. And I just can't do something like that. A bunch of large organization actually came to me and said, hey, we're doing box breaks. Can you advocate for it? And we'll uh, give you a spot. And I just can't in good conscience uh, advocate for something like that. So 
That's the reason why the stream went really poorly. It was eight hours long. You had no idea when your booster packs were being opened. It was really confusing. If you blink, you would miss your pack opening. So even if you were in the right time frame to see your packs, your packs being open, you didn't really get a good experience anyway. So a lot of people were really angry because they spent hard earned money on this whole entire break experience. Um, honestly, I wouldn't do this box break again if they ever do it again. I don't think they will. It was such a debacle. So why did Unlisted Leaf quit? Because that's kind of huge as well since he's such a large part in the Pokemon community in general. A lot of people watch his channel. He quit pretty much over just a lot of anger. A lot of people were angry over it. A lot of people were disappointed and a lot of people were harassing him, giving him threats because they did buy into it, mainly because he advocated for it. At the end of the day, Unlisted Leaf did get paid somewhat for it, even if he didn't set the price. So he does owe some level of responsibility over it. Uh, I wish he would take more responsibility and ownership and really apologize for the experience and just make it right. Make it right for his viewers rather than taking the road of just quitting YouTube. But I totally understand. Some people just can't handle that level of harassment. I mean, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot to handle and I can understand where he's coming from to take a step back and just go away from it all. So I totally understand that. Um, nothing against him. I mean, I made my own choice to spend $50 on three celebrations booster packs. So it is what it is. And so I'm sure you guys are cur curious about what cards I got from the break opening. And I'm curious as well. I do think I remember I got at least one subset card because I did see my booster packs being opened up live. But like I said, it lasted for five seconds and it was over. It was not the most enjoyable experience. So let's see what I got. All right, here it is. Our three booster packs for 50 dollars and i do get myself an unlisted leaf signed card so if you're a fan of unlisted leaf i guess that's kind of neat they even gave me the wrappers because why not why not i really appreciate the actual wrappers themselves that the packs came in i don't know why that was given i imagine these code cards are still good so let's see exactly what we get in here some cards are actually top loaded which is nice i appreciate the extra care given to the good cards. I imagine that we got some level of pulls. We got two cards in top loader. So I got what, two decent cards? No, I only got one decent card. The other card is the unlisted leave sign card. Pretty neat if you're a fan of him. I'll keep that one for memory. What else do we have? We have one card in a soft sleeve and no other cards were sleeved, so I imagine none of these cards were good. I mean, for three booster packs, if you get zero subset cards, that's just brutal. You spent $50 and you got pretty much highway robbed for your wallet. So yep, we got a bunch of regular hodlos, which are worth pretty much a couple of pennies each. Uh, let's see what ultra rare we got. Oh, it's not an ultra rare, it's the base Pikachu. I do remember what pull I got. I got one good pull. If you consider it a good pull, I would consider it a good pull. It wasn't anything crazy. Uh, I'm not even going to spoil it for you guys. So we're just going to flip it and see what card we got. Dark Gyarados. That's exactly what I saw on stream. I did pull a Dark Gyarados on stream and I, re I really appreciate it. It was neat, but it lasted for literally a second. I saw the pull. I blinked and the card was gone. They were moving on to the next viewer. So as far as a pack opening experience go, it was terrible. And I feel like the people who put this whole entire stream together really missed the mark and they didn't understand why people buy into this. I wanted to see Unlisted Leaf open these booster packs because I thought he would. He didn't. Uh, the excuse was that it was COVID related. If he couldn't do it, then I don't know. I don't like that. Uh, at the same time, three booster packs, like I said, for $50 is just a terrible deal. If it was due to cost, if it was due to labor, if they couldn't make the price cheaper, 
I would raise the amount of booster packs each person got because way too many people bought in. The stream was like eight hours long and there were so many people having their booster packs open just like a machine. And that's not the kind of experience that people want. People don't want to see their booster packs being open like it was some sort of conveyor belt or industrial line. People want to see their cards open up with care, with enjoy enjoyment and excitement. People wanna see like when you pull a subset card, you're wowed by it. You're happy to see it. You talk about it for a little bit. You enjoy the experience. And people didn't get that. People didn't feel like the people who are opening up these booster packs, which were pretty much faceless, they were no name, uh, were pretty much giving zero cares to their cards. And that's not the experience that people wanted. A lot of people enjoy a pack opening experience. Even if they get zero hits, they want to have a fun pack opening experience. I talk about that a lot. And I think that some sets are better than other when it comes to just having enjoyment out of opening up your booster packs, regardless if you get something good or not. A lot of people actually open up booster packs while watching my video because it's more enjoyable when you're doing something with someone else. So I really appreciate that. And a lot of people didn't enjoy the pack opening experience when it comes to this celebrations box break. If you didn't buy in, you really missed nothing. I bought in, so you didn't have to, so you can pretty much understand. This is pretty much a medium level experience right here. Most people got something close to this, which is one subset card and a lot of hollow rares, uh, just basic ones. Pretty much you wouldn't get anything really special. Very, very few people got something cool, like maybe a, an Umbreon or a Charizard. Most people left with no hits or pretty mediocre hits. And I think just, that's just terrible. Um, personally, I wouldn't do a box break ever again. I think this was, a nice lesson learned and in general with Unlisted Leaf being at the front and center of the whole entire controversy, I'm not surprised that most people uh, took their anger out specifically on him, which is kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.